Two quick things uh, before I get started here. Uh, one is that I just got done watching, oh, what is it, like six and a half hours of Animaniacs, I think. Uh, I thought they were just going to release, like, the first episode and they released the whole season. So I had to watch it because I know everybody wanted to know what my thought was. So uh, I had to move a lot of stuff around. And because of that, I was kind of watching this and doing a few other things. So hopefully I, I caught everything. I still took notes and everything. So uh, if there's one or two things I miss, I, I, I apologize. I, I think I got most of it. Uh, the other thing, kind of tying into that, is, um, you know, last uh, last week I was talking about how, oh, I don't want these other characters from other shows doing, like, crossovers in Mandalorian. It should be its own thing. And I asked, what'd you guys think? And there's a reason I asked that. Uh, a lot of you pointed out that because... I guess a lot of what Mandalorian is, a lot of elements from it, you know, like uh, the Darksaber, if I'm right, even like kind of the history of Mandalorians or different types of Mandalorians and stuff came from these shows like uh, Star Wars Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, I think. Uh, but as I said before, I hadn't seen the shows. Um, and the, the one of the comparisons I was making was like, oh, I don't want us to be like Legolas in The Hobbit, you know what I mean? Like, you know, turning up where, you know, it's like you don't need these characters to be its own thing. And a lot of people were pointing out this is kind of like Gandalf being in The Hobbit. Like, it's actually really needed. It was already being set up uh, in the first season. I believe you. Uh, on top of that, what I liked uh, in that previous episode was that I didn't even know those were characters from other shows until I looked them up because it was pretty self-contained. So that was one of my big fears was that, uh, you know, it's like, well, you can't follow it unless you know these other shows that, you know, I haven't seen. But like a lot of things in these shows, uh, or in this show at least, uh, it's kind of like Star Wars in general. You don't need to know Star Wars, but it definitely helps out with it. I do really want to see this show because everybody says it's great. I, I get Clone Wars and I guess Rebels is another one uh, that everyone says I should really, really check out. So I'll try to check it out for Disney December because everyone says they're fantastic. Uh, it, but there's a lot of them too. So I will do my best. Uh, but bottom line, I heard you. I believe you. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know much more about this than I do because I have not seen those shows. I really like Star Wars. I like the movies and some of the spinoffs. I have not seen those shows. Uh, so going forward, if there's something I miss connected to those shows, just keep that in mind. I'm going to try and watch them uh, to try and catch up. But as you well know, there's a lot of them. So, uh, so I will do my best. And thank you for letting me know. Uh, I legit did not know that, that there's a lot of things connected to uh, uh, Mandalorian through uh, Clone Wars and Rebels. So thank you for letting me know that. Uh, with that said, um, I love hearing Mando talk baby talk to Baby Yoda, just, all right, no, you want to put the blue wire there, you want to put the red wire, like, that's the first thing I wrote down, because everything's been pretty, you know, just straightforward, no, don't touch that, no, that's not a toy, there's something funny about him saying, okay, you want to put the blue wire there, no, you don't want to do that one, did that, that kind of just made my day, um, I should probably go over the basics to, like, say what this episode is. We're looking at the siege. A uh, lot of characters come back in this one. Uh, Grief comes back. Kara comes back. Uh, I'm forgetting his name, but the blue dude from the first episode comes back. Uh, and actually, that's something I, li I like to know your thoughts on is, um, you know, when they do something in, like in a movie or a show where it's like the main character showing how badass they are by, you know, capturing somebody or something like that. And most of the time, it has nothing to do with the rest of the plot. Like, it's just to set up the main character. Uh, do you like that, or do you like here where they come back? Uh, you know, because it's like, oh, that guy, like, did serve a purpose. That's good to know. Because uh, I'm kind of fine either way, but I know people that, like, hate it when they just have a character there just to set them up, and then you never see him again. Like, they don't tie into the story much or anything. Uh, so I, I'm curious, is that like a pet peeve of yours, or are you fine with it? I'm personally fine with it, but I know people that, like, hate that cliche. Uh, so in this one, uh, once again, it's kind of a side quest, but it's more like the main characters. And again, you do get some more information that just kind of adds to the mystery, which is always great. Uh, I, I love stuff like that, where the more information you get, kind of the bigger puzzle it reveals um but uh it's another one of those where they at first i was kind of feeling bummed because i'm like oh we just saw an episode where they're shooting you know stormtroopers like in in hallways and stuff like that like you know it doesn't even look that imaginative it just looks like another kind of empire ship whatever but 
man, they get to a good chase at the end. Like, this was a really cool chase that they had. They had the, um, uh, the what you, I don't know what they're called, but, but those scooters uh, from Return of the Jedi that... I don't see that often because I, I saw him in Return of the Jedi. I'm, I It's actually one of my favorite scenes from that movie. Uh, and I don't see him pop up much. So I'm glad not only did they do a chase scene, but it wasn't in the woods. It was somewhere else. Uh, just hearing those sound effects. Uh, like the woo, woo, like those weird sounds. I love it. I, I don't know what it is about those things. I just think they're so cool. Um, and they look like they're fun to ride and they're cool to have an action sequence. Uh, uh, fucking uh, Kara slamming the ship into one of them, blowing them up. Uh, the gun shooting the one on top. That's great. I love the scene where it looks like the uh, TIE fighters are flying off. Like they're the, the base is blowing up, so they're flying away. But then they're just keeping the chase going. They're still chasing uh, the ship, which again, I love something that does that. It's like, oh, that was good. Okay, you calm down. That's like, oh, it's still going and it's gotten bigger. Like, I, I, that's, I love it when they do that in uh, uh, shows and movies, especially when you're like, it could end there, but man, I wish there was more and they give you more. Like, they know what the audience wants. Love that. Um... You know, this was actually uh, directed by Carl uh, Weathers, you know, the guy that plays uh, Grief. So just for fun, I did a little research, see if he directed uh, anything else. And it was a lot of TV, and it was stuff like Hawaii, you know, the new Hawaii Five-O and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I, I feel like he's got action down, man. Because uh, the other scene when Mando is flying up, destroys one of the ships, and then turns around, you know, you have that pause where he starts the engine, and he's just dropping while also turning the engines, flying towards that ship, and just the dogfight flying right at each other, playing chicken. What a fucking awesome sequence. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I know it seems like I'm focusing a lot on that, because... It was fucking awesome. I, I just thought it was a really, really cool chase. It went on just the right amount of time. It wasn't too long. Uh, there was just enough information uh, introduced as well that you're like, well, what's this about? Like, there's uh, the whole thing, I guess, again, with, like, Baby Yoda's blood. Like, what is in that blood? You see this lab where, again... I could be missing this. Maybe it's something people recognize. I don't know. But they look at something that, that looks frozen, uh, you know, kind of in this, uh, in the lab. That was hard to make out. I mean, it had kind of a human form. But, like, I couldn't make it out. If you know what it is, uh, let me know. Um, but, uh, but, but even then, I'm still like, oh, my God, I, I want to know what that is. Uh, of course, given the information that um, uh, Gideon is still alive. Oh, whenever I say Gideon, I think Gravity Falls. <laughs> it's because I always get his first name wrong. Is it Moss or Moth or what? I, I got to look it up again. Uh, but, uh, you know, now, I mean, of course, we knew that, but they're given that information as well. Um I like uh, the uh, the blue guy when they're, there's one scene where the stormtroopers are firing and they're firing back and there's just a funny scene. It felt improvised, but maybe I'm wrong, where he's trying to get a shot in, but he just keeps ducking like that. And I again, I feel like with with a lesser character, a lesser actor, that would have been annoying, but that, that character was pretty funny. I, I think he's acted uh, pretty well. Like, he's a character you want to see go on more, uh, adventures, which I really, really like, um, let me see here, uh, oh, I, I really like, um, I like when they can reveal something about a character where you don't need to say much, and again, like, if you know Star Wars, you know what Alderaan is, you know what happens, uh, you know, what happened to Alderaan, uh, so as soon as they say, you know, that, that car, it's like, oh, it says you're from Alderaan, and then the music kind of hits, and you're like, oh, man, I know what that is, uh, and he brings up, you know, did you lose anyone? She says, I lost everyone. Again, I like that because if you know, if you know Star Wars, if you know the name of the planet and everything, uh, it's like a oh, holy shit. But even if you don't, she says she lost everything. She lost everyone. Uh, so you don't need that, you know, to explain anymore, but it's cool doing research on it if you don't know. Like, if you didn't remember, that's the one that, you know, like, Darth Vader blew up and everything. Uh, so I am really liking that. That That's one of the things where I was kind of hoping they would do it. Like, the, my fear was that, like I said before, you have to have seen other Star Wars properties in order to follow, and they haven't done that yet, uh, which I'm really, really happy to see. Um, and, of course, it ends with uh, there's a tracking device and Gideon's going to follow him. Uh, and, again, maybe this is something you know. <laughs> I, I hate saying that because it's like I'm, I'm talking like, you know, well, hey, isn't this an interesting point of view? But it's like I'm asking you for the point of view. <laughs> it's more just that lineup of uh, 
of those black suits. Like, I don't know what that was, or are those, like, just that they're getting ready for battle, or they is a type of armor or something. I'm not really sure, but they played the music really dramatic, uh, and it could just end it with him doing an evil smile, but instead shows these suits, so I... Do we know what that is, or are they building up? It's gonna be something really, really bad. So, um, with that all said, it was pretty cool, man. Uh, yeah, like, it, a lot of it's just that chase scene. I thought that was just a cool, fun, intense, creative chase scene. It was incorporating stuff, you know, like, uh, devices and vehicles from the past, but it was also working in, um, you know, everything we have with, with this world, with the Mandalorian and Kara, and, um, uh, I don't think we've seen that, uh, vehicle before, the one that she slams into, uh, you know, the Stormtroopers, and so I could be wrong, but, uh, uh, and we definitely haven't seen those things fly, you know, on, like, that kind of planet in a canyon before, uh, so... I dug it. I really liked it. Um, and like I said, dropped just the right amount of information to keep you hooked, but not explain everything either. So, um, like I said, probably uh, not a ton I have to say about this one, because I was just watching, whatever, six and a half hours of Animaniacs, <laughs> which very different things, definitely. But uh, uh, I really liked it. What did you think? Did, is there Were there any other really big Easter eggs that you're like, holy shit, that means something big? Or is it all a mystery, what's going to happen next, and that's part of the fun. Let me know your thoughts, and I will see you next time. Take care.